sectional perspective is important in architecture drawing because it allows the viewer to see and understand the interior space of a building as well as the relationship between those spaces. I often use this technique to explain the big picture idea to clients during the early phase of a project so follow along and see how this technique is created in a drawing. By the way, if you are interested in seeing more of my design process on Lightpad, I have a free three-part workshop that you can sign up for today. The workshop are perfect if you are considering moving to a digital workflow that will save you time, allow you to work smarter and faster, and free you from a traditional office environment. I'll show you real-world examples with different applications on how I use my iPad for architectural and interior design work. You can click this link above or find it in the video description below. As with any drawing, let's go ahead and insert this photo as a backdrop to sketch on top. And here I've actually resized it just a little bit smaller. So I have a little bit more white space around it. And then go ahead and decrease the opacity at a point where you can still see the drawing, but your line weight is also visibly on top. The next step is really spending the time to carefully trace over the existing geometry. You can do this quickly or as slowly as you want. I often would have some music or YouTube or videos playing in the background, so this is a little bit more enjoyable. But this does take a while to trace over the basic massing and the geometry. I often trace over these bigger containers so I can fill in the smaller details later on. And I would do all this in one layer as you'll see. It's not uncommon that I will redraw the same line over and over again until I have a line weight or style that I like. And that's really the beauty of drawing an iPad is you can do this as many times with redo and eraser. I do want to caution you that you don't want to overdraw this with too many details. We'll save that for a new layer. The beauty of this approach is that you could have a sort of a crude massing and it doesn't have to be very detailed. And oftentimes you can draw in these details as a sketch format much, much faster. So you can see the tables and legs are drawn very quickly. The basic idea is we're gonna focus our effort on getting the bigger geometries done before we start adding the details. I really encourage you to zoom in and out to get your hand at the most comfortable or optimal position for drawing. You can see often I have my screen rotated 90 degrees, 45 degrees, or even 180 degrees so that it's more comfortable for my hand to rest on the screen to draw a certain direction. In this design, we've got these cute glass bubble in the floor that will bring light from upstairs to downstairs. You can see that the exterior terrace isn't modeled out, so we're going to manually construct these guardrails. In this project, there is a fully grown tree in this courtyard, and that's going, also going to have a Peloton bike added in later on. I have a separate video on how to draw trees, but this is very quickly on how I draw trees, just with an outline with a little bit of foliage at the bottom and a little bit more details towards the end. It doesn't have to be very detailed, it just needs to be very suggestive. These guardrails are going to be manually added in for the outside, and we're just gonna redraw it because the railing has this sort of a circular style to match the interior railing. The way I draw shadow is usually with a dash, dot, and dash. And this is just how I personally draw shadow. It's a little bit of a stylistic preference and technique that I borrowed from somebody else. Let's go ahead and add some diagonal hatching to the fenestration and the glazing and a little bit of realism to the skylights. At this point, I will turn off the SketchUp background so I can see things more clearly without it. And eventually, I'll turn on a SketchUp shadow layer to bring more depth to the drawing. Here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more details like the door frame and the doorknob. No, so now here you're trying to see that I'm actually trying to poche the section cut with a solid black color. And you can do this very easily and quickly with the color drop tool in Procreate. Now it's time to adding some textures into cores. And this I'll also do on a separate layer. Once you draw in these decors and fixtures, you can go ahead and erase the lines that are behind it later on. Let's go ahead and put some books on the shelves and maybe some smaller objects on the shelf as well. 
and pillows on the sofa. It's these kind of details that makes the drawing more humanized. So now I have turned on the shadow layer and this layer is instantly going to add in a lot more depth to the scene. And it's a very quick and effective approach and method to adding to your existing black and white drawing. You can do this in SketchUp, Rhino, Revit, and most 3D softwares. It's important to rename your layer so you can easily find them later on. The last part of this drawing is really just getting more details into the section. At this point, the drawing is mostly done. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of effort cleaning it up in the shadow area and the drawing. Now I'm gonna go on one of my favorite website to find a person and put that into the drawing to set the scale and also just to humanize the story a little bit more. And it's really easy to do this. All you need to do is go on website like Mr. Cutout, screen grab this person, and then we're just gonna copy and paste it into Procreate and resize it to a point where it's it looks believable in a scale. So I'm gonna put this right around the railing area. I'm gonna decrease the opacity a little bit so I can sketch over on top and then eventually erase the person. So this is just very quickly done to bring in a person. It's a very small thing that you can do to add in some scale. Now, after I sent in the drawing for review, I've actually you know, came back with some comments. So we're going to just edit these rolling to remove the top row because the guard row actually has this sort of a loop-like style where it doesn't have a top cap. And if you drew it on a separate layer, it's really easy to edit that. And what I'm gonna do first is actually just to trace over it in a red line weight, and then I'm gonna erase the line work around it. And then I'm going to decrease the saturation of this red line to black. So it blends in perfectly. And then edit the shadow layer manually. You also see that I'm slowly just trying to get rid of the top cap for these guardrails. We also want just to show a little bit more bush around this central garden. And the client actually wanted to see maybe a Peloton bike that can be located in this courtyard. So I'm actually gonna bring in this reference of the bike and just somewhat draw it in place. So it looks about in the right position and scale. That looks kind of believable. So let's go ahead and do the same thing and erase the line work that are drawn behind it. And this is gonna sit on a tile surface. 